Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Mufia. I'm the director of uh, general surgery and minimal access to life sciences at the Sir H. N. Reliance Foundation Hospital. I'm speaking to you today on the 4th of March, uh, 2023, as today is the World Obesity Day. It's time that we recognize obesity as a disease. A lot of people have been stigmatized because they are struggling with it. Invariably, most people believe that obesity is just something where you put on a little bit of weight. You can easily manage it by just trying to lose that weight with a little bit of diet, a little bit of exercise. And that's as simple as that. What you take in and what you take out is as simple as that. Unfortunately, obesity as a disease is a chronic, life-threatening disease with a lot of comorbidities. As the WHO, so the World Health Organization, defines it. So let me start from the beginning. <clears throat> Those struggling with obesity right from childhood, let's say the first few years of uh, after your birth, can be because of a monogenic cause of obesity which might lie in your brain somewhere. And you might have certain enzymes or certain hormones which are missing or certain factors in your brain which might be affecting it. Majority of the obesity happens towards in, in women towards men are gay, when they start getting their periods, is because of the hormones that are raging within their body, the PCOD or the PCOS, the tiny follicles of the ovaries which get affected. Next week up to male, adolescent obesity is rapidly on the rise in male, and that's only because of unhealthy eating habits. We've gone away from the days of eating basic staple diets, and we, we believe in fast foods, we believe in, in everything which is can be put into a microwave and had. So we've gone away from the days of maintaining the color of our vegetables. Everything is deep fried today. We've gone away from the uh, joy of eating our fruits. We rather go into tetra packs and various other things, which are packed with sugar and sugar content, rather than having the fiber of the fruit. So I would really recommend that if you were to stick to natural sugars, take to the fruit of the sugar and have the fruit rather than the juice of it. Uh, enjoy the color of your vegetables. Eat seasonal. Eat local. Because that is always going to happen. When it comes to diet, it's always, uh, most people across the world have said, it's always better to get up on a, sm a slightly empty stomach than getting up on a full stomach. However, but you're driven to eating that food because that's going to go a long way in preventing you from developing obesity. Now, in terms of BMI, when your BMI rises above 23.5 or above 24, and you are an eating or an Asian, invariably you get into the overweight category. Up to 27.5 is overweight. And the thing is that most people do not act here. This is when you need to act. This is when you need to exercise. This is when you need to try various diet options. But remember, if a diet's worked on your friend or it's worked on a public figure, it's not necessarily going to work on you. Because of the chronicity of the disease. Obesity, uh, after 27.5, obesity uh, starts. Well, it's grade 1 obesity up to 32.5, grade 2 uh, between 32.5 and 37.5, and grade 3 obesity above 37.5, called morbid obesity. Then the BMI just keeps changing. But what I want to tell you is that being an Indian and Asian, your genes are loaded against you to develop type 2 diabetes. So at very, very low BMIs, even at a BMI as low as 27.5, you can develop type 2 diabetes. Don't blame your parents. It's you who've put on weight around the midriff as the years go on and stopped exercising, got into eating more food, that you've started putting on the weight, and that's where type 2 diabetes comes in. Another thing that we must know is obesity uh, affects your head to toe. So right from migraines, uh, intracranial hypertension to uh, hypothyroidism, which can get much worse. You can put on weight because of hypothyroidism, but that's the worst tides can be up to seven to eight kilos. If you are really obese, your hypothyroid symptoms will get much worse. So it's a vicious cycle. Next week, up to the heart, we all do know that obese people have lots of heart problems, both right side as well as left side heart failure. When it comes to your lungs, uh, Sleep apnea, you keep snoring even when you don't want to. Uh, you ha your asthma gets much worse because of the gastroesophageal reflux that obese people develop. Goldstones is known to be associated with obesity. 
various hernias because the, the fat makes your muscles weak. So right from uh, high to the hernia where you get acidity and reflux to uh, hernia to the groin and the umbilicus. That pancreas, infection of the pancreas or pancreatitis is known to be associated with obesity. Young women who are obese quite often cannot get fertile. That's all because of infertility which happens around obesity. So it starts with PCOS, PCOD. You have black marks around your neck which you keep trying to scrub off with soap and it never seems to go off. That's called acanthosis nigricans in medical terms. It's all because of insulin resistance that your body's picking up. So you're going towards that to diabetes. Metabolic syndrome, hypertension, uh, cholesterol or triglycerides going up and down, along with type 2 diabetes, along with fatty liver or non-alcoholic fatty liver, along with gout. These five things together called metabolic syndrome. And that happens in obese people. Uh, 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 an obese lady might actually laugh or cough out loud and pass a little bit of urine. A stress urinary incontinence. This is a no thing with females. Uh, that weight bearing joints like osteoarthritis or backache, all that happens with weight related. There's another type of arthritis that can happen in obese people, and that's called because of high uric acid levels, gouty arthritis. Then you can get blood clots that form in your leg that kill you instantly. That's the biggest risk that obese people carry of deep vein thrombosis and a pulmonary apolysis. Another thing that most people are not aware or did attach significance to up till now or recently is the fact that a lot of cancers at the US uh, CDC guidelines just recently released two years back actually said that there's a direct link between a lot of the cancers in both males and females. Breast cancer, ovarian cancer, uh, uterine cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer. So there are at least nine to ten different types of cancers that have a direct link to be obese for a very, very long time. So what are the options that you have? Well, one thing that I did tell you is about the mental health aspects of obesity. Quite often we realize that those people who are obese try fighting this disease one after the other, but they seek to lose with every option. And then society stigmatizes them, does not treat them properly, always believes it's their fault that they are obese and it's not a disease. And that's when they go more and more into their shell. They, they start becoming rude to people. Some of them are even go to the extent of being suicidal. Uh, they, they, they go away from jobs. They don't get jobs easily. People mock them. And people are just not kind to obese people. So as a society, we have to take a call of uh, avoiding stigmatization of these people, avoiding shapes and sizes that can be stigmatized, just like we avoid stigmatization on the basis of race, religion, or caste. Another thing that obese people must realize is that because of the chronic disease, it's not as simple as going on a diet because diets will last for a short period of time. Yes, you will lose weight. The problem is maintenance of the weight. So when you're overweight, try and do all this. Once you're obese, then the options start becoming limited. Yes, a lot of people have lost significant amounts of weight. The problem is that you'll see a lot of these challenges like the obesity challenge or the uh, big loser challenge. Invariably, you'll see that if you meet these people two or three years down the line, they put on all the weight that they've lost miraculously at the first time. And every time you try the diet the next time around, you might not succeed the same way that you did the first time. This is just pure science. There are lots of new drugs which are available today uh, that can help you in your weight loss journey. But remember that they, they're all only as good as you want them to be good. So a basis of diet modification, exercise, good sleep, because lack of sleep can again lead you to obesity. And then when everything else fails, there is bariatric surgery. No bariatric surgery, not many people prefer as the first option. It's not your first option. But if you're diabetic and you are struggling with fatty liver, and you're struggling with not being able to move around or needing knee replacements and various other things that your orthopedic surgeon tells you, you need to lose weight before you come in for the surgery. Or you're even needing a transplant surgery. Sometimes you might need uh, to lose weight before your surgeon actually recommends. Bariatric surgery gives you a great and effective tool at maintaining that weight loss. Losing weight, yes, but maintaining significant amounts of weight, probably that's the best answer that we have today. I wish that this short summary that I've told you would kind of help you to understand how obese people live their life 
It's a struggle every day. Let's help them in understanding their disease. Let's treat it as a disease. And let's, as society, stop stigmatizing these people. Thank you so much. And see you soon.